Hello, and welcome back to What the Fast. I just wanted to quickly talk about water before I get into the into today's main topic. Water's still tasting pretty good to me here on day 16, and I'm really happy about that. Water was just almost unbearable on my first fast, and I have a theory on that. So for my first fast, I was um, buying distilled water from Walmart. I bought a whole bunch of jugs of distilled water, which was a terrible idea, and I would never do it again. Um, <laughs> knowing now what I know now. <laughs> um... So Walmart's been caught doing all kinds of shady things, and if you're looking to be a healthy person, you should really probably never buy anything from Walmart. Not too long ago, I was reading an article about how they were injecting their meats with um, this contaminated water to increase the weight so they could charge more, and um, the water was not of a good quality and was making it unhealthy, and... Walmart's been caught in all kinds of things like this. You could find all, all kinds of examples of stories like that. So, this time I'm, as I've mentioned, I'm using the probe here, and I've got to say it's really been doing its work. I also keep a couple of silver coins in my, uh, in the lower chamber of my water filter. Um, this is a very old method. Silver is well known for its water purification ability. The propure is silver impregnated already, but I figure why not. Sailors, incidentally, uh, when they were going on long sea voyages, actually used to keep a couple of silver coins in the bottom of their water barrels to keep it pure. Uh, that's just a fun fact I figured I'd throw in. I've got been getting some questions on what happens in the bathroom while you fast. Um, and short answer, not a whole lot. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, but, um, end of video. That's all, so all of my fasts, I've had my, um, my final bowel BM uh, happen very shortly after eating my last meal. Um, this time I had a BM three days after my last meal, and then that was it. As I mentioned before, uh, we do have a lot of um, junk in our intestines. After the end of a long fast, your intestines are clean as a whistle. So how does this happen if you're not having any uh, movements? Well, this is one of those kind of gross fast things. All of that crap uh, is actually reabsorbed uh, through your intestines and reused by your body. <laughs> now, I know that sounds a little gross, and um, it may be one of the reasons why you feel so uh, terrible and crappy, because, uh, after all, your body is kind of running on crap. Me, 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 me. But while we're on the topic of uh, digestion, I wanted to talk about the appendix. Uh, because I feel like it's a misunderstood little uh, part of the human body. Now, the appendix is... Um, most people think that it's a vestigial, pointless uh, object, and let's just chop it out! <laughs> um, no. You don't have any pointless parts of your body. Your body was very intelligently designed. What the appendix actually does is it stores good, uh, positive digestive bacteria it's uh, kind of a reservoir. This bacteria is stored and then it becomes released when um, the situation calls for it. The appendix is particularly useful in cases of ulcerative colitis, um, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and after a bout with cholera or dysentery, which essentially clears your intestines of all of the positive um, digestive bacteria, the appendix replenishes the bacteria because it is a reservoir. Everyone's aware that at times the appendix gets inflamed, and um, this is a sign that something is wrong with uh, what you're doing. Chopping your appendix out after it becomes inflamed is 
a pretty poor choice of a way to go. If your appendix is inflamed, that's a good sign that you really need to change your diet. And a me metaphor that you might think of is if your house is on fire and your smoke detector starts going off, you can either take that as a sign of danger and look to put out the fire or call the fire department, or you could smash the smoke detector with a hammer and go back to sleep. <laughs> uh, which is kind of what people do when they just uh, cut out their inflamed appendix. I actually was experiencing sharp pains in my side before I did my first fast. Um, that's actually one of the main reasons that I did it, because I had this crippling pain in my right side. I could barely move, and I noticed that when I didn't eat, it didn't hurt so much. Which is when I began looking into, well, how long can I just go without eating? And then I began researching fasting, and before you knew it, you have what the faster. <laughs> and here I am today, still a big believer in fasting. Because after all, I was experiencing the crippling pain about six years ago, and you know, I, I'm still, still intact today, appendix, um, packing an appendix, and I'm happy about that. Just to reiterate, you don't have any pointless parts in your body. Um, don't just go chopping yourself up a much better way than the normal medical route of treating the symptoms is to look to, keep, to fix the causes. And that's pretty much all I want to decide to die. So, thank you for watching and check back next time.